In the upcoming expansion for Guild Wars 2, ArenaNet is adding the continent of Canva. Lots of people, including me, are really excited about this. But why exactly do so many Guild Wars fans care so much about Canva? What exactly makes this area of the world so exciting? Today, I am going to explain to you why people want to go to Canva so badly. We're going to take a look around in Guild Wars 1, and I am going to tell you all about the different regions and creatures of Canva. At the end of this video, you will hopefully be just as excited about Canva as I am. Let's get started. Canva is a continent to the south of Tyria and Ilona. It was first introduced in Guild Wars Factions all the way back in 2006. That was 15 years ago, so it is no wonder that most players are not that familiar with Canva. To many people, Factions kind of felt like the first expansion to Guild Wars 1, even though it was technically a standalone game. So when Guild Wars 2 came out and people started speculating about possible expansions, Canva sort of naturally came up. It was the first continent added to Guild Wars 1, so why not revisit it in Guild Wars 2? Especially in the first couple of years of Guild Wars 2, speculation about a Canva expansion was rampant. At the time, Living World Season 1 was giving us new content to play, but it was nowhere near as substantial as a big expansion with a new continent to explore. People were enjoying Season 1, but what most people really wanted was a big expansion. And Canva just seemed to make a lot of sense. It felt like at this time you couldn't visit Reddit without seeing people dream about a Canva expansion. Eventually, we would get the expansion announcement that we were all hoping for, but it wasn't a Canva expansion. Instead, we called Heart of Forms. Heart of Forms was a fantastic expansion, which introduced a ton of features that made Guild Wars 2 what it is today. But at the time, some people were disappointed that we didn't visit Canva instead. Eventually, we would also get a second expansion, Path of Fire. In Path of Fire, we revisited the Crystal Desert and Alona, the setting of Guild Wars Nightfall. Eventually, the Icebreak Saga would even take us north to the setting of Guild Wars Eye of the North. Guild Wars 2 had now covered every Guild Wars 1 region. Every region except for one. Canva. Over the years, it felt as if the player base started caring just a little bit less about a Canva expansion. My guess is that as the years have passed, a larger and larger portion of the player base has never played Guild Wars 1. But the dream of a Canva expansion never really went away. And now, 9 years after the release of Guild Wars 2, we are finally getting one. And the original Guild Wars game introduced us to the continent of Teria. We saw places like Ascalon, the Shiver Peaks, and Krita for the very first time. I love this continent to bits, but at the same time, I have to admit that it felt similar to a lot of other fantasy settings. Pretty human kingdoms in the woods, dwarves living in the mountains, spooky volcanic islands. They were all executed very well, but we have seen places like this before in lots of other franchises. When ArenaNet made Canva, it's like they tried their best to create places that were more unique. This is a large part of people's excitement for Canva. We saw a giant metropolis, a sea turned into solid jade, and a forest turned into stone. Let's go on a bit of a tour, shall we? Factions players would start their journey on the island of Xingjie, just off the coast of the main Canvan continent. It is a beautiful lush island with lots of farmlands and cold mountain ranges. At the time of Factions, it was relatively peaceful, but it wasn't always like that. Many battles had occurred between the native Tengu and the humans, but eventually a fragile peace was formed. There were quite some settlements spread around the islands, but by far the biggest population center was Xingjie Monastery. Here, students would be taught professions, and as a Factions player character, we were one of those students. With Xingjie Island, ArenaNet did something similar to what they did with pre searing Ascalon in the original game. They started players off in a beautiful, inviting, and relatively peaceful setting. After Xingjie is when the land started to get more dangerous, and the conflicts really intensifies. At the time of recording this video, we haven't seen that much footage of End of Dragons just yet, but most of what we have seen has been of Xingjie Island. We can recognize several landmarks, like for example the Monastery and Saitung Harbor. It is actually worth noting that we have been to Xingjie in Guild Wars 2 before. The Sunkwa Peak Fractal takes place above Sunkwa Vale, which is pretty close to the monastery. The mainland of Canva was a lot less peaceful than Xingjie, and it featured some of the most unique areas that we have ever seen in the Guild Wars franchise. In the north, we find Kainang City, which is an enormous metropolis. Kainang City is the capital of the Empire of the Dragon, which is in control of all of Canva. The Emperor lives here in the beautiful Raizu Palace, but most of Kainang is not as beautiful. 
In the 200 years before Gilter's factions, the city expanded incredibly quickly. In the sovereign regions of Canva, a cataclysmic event took place known as the Jade Winds. The Jade Winds was caused by Shiro Tagachi, the Emperor's bodyguards. He killed the Emperor during a magical ceremony and was then killed himself. When Shiro dies, an enormous amount of magic was unleashed, which ravaged and transformed the sovereign regions of Canva. As the people from these southern areas fled north to safety, Kainang City had to expand very quickly. Urban planning wasn't really the priority. Wooden buildings were quickly built on top of other wooden buildings, and Kainang became the enormous residential center that it is today. Some areas of the city became quite dangerous. The Jade Brotherhood and the Amfa, enormous criminal organizations, quickly rose to power and would regularly spill blood in the streets. The city had become an enormous vertical labyrinth. There were many sewer tunnels beneath the streets, and some areas became effectively underground because so much was built on top of it. Kynang City was incredibly memorable to me, and I know a lot of players who had the same experience. From the beautiful, rich areas like Raizu Palace to the poor areas with stacked buildings reaching into the skies. Besides, all the history books say Kynang City was a dump. I had never seen anything like this in a fantasy setting, and I'm really excited to see it again in Guild Wars 2. We haven't actually seen Kynang City so far in the pre-release footage of End of Dragons. We haven't even really seen any obvious Kynang concept art. However, there is this one piece of art in the background of the 9th anniversary infographic. It looks a bit like a city, but there seem to be green and blue neon lights. Could it be that in End of Dragons, Kynang City has been modernized? Will we see a Jade Punk Kynang City powered by June's Dragon Jade reactors that we saw in the End of Dragons trailer? Only time can tell. South of Kainang, we find the Echovald Forest and the Jade Sea, which were both changed massively by the Jade Winds. These are the homes of the Kursix and the Luxons, who long had a fierce rivalry with one another. The Echovald Forest used to be a beautiful and lush forest. When it was hit by the Jade Winds, the entire forest was petrified and turned into stone. The Kursix adapted and began to call the stone forest their home. Echovald has this very creepy, gothic vibe. There are enormous cathedrals with spooky statues and the towns are lit by chandeliers hanging from the trees. I find the concept art of this place endlessly fascinating. There is just something hauntingly beautiful about it. In the years between Gilders 1 and 2, the forest has slowly begun to spring back to life. We have seen a lot of End of Dragons concept art showing a lush forest, which very much seems like Echovald's. In a livestream, we even saw some in-game footage of the Echo Vault map. I absolutely love the way this looks. Clearly, time has passed since Guild Wars 1 and the forest has changed, but the Kursic Cathedral still make it very recognizable as Echo Vaults. I cannot wait to explore this place in Guild Wars 2. To the east of Echo Vault lies the Jade Sea. This is where the Luxons lived, who were traditionally seafaring people. The Jade Sea was also affected by the Jade Winds, but in a different way. As the name already suggests, the sea itself was turned into solid jades. This makes for yet another incredibly unique setting. Players walk around on this jades. There are solid waves, sea monsters, islands, beaches, and it's all incredibly pretty. The Luxons, just like the Kursix, have adapted to these changes. They changed their ships into homes and are now nomads. They trek across the jades with their massive but very cute sea turtles. The Luxons have also started mining the Jades, which is not only beautiful, but also said to have magical properties. We haven't seen the Jade Sea yet in in-game footage of End of Dragons, but it looks like this area is going to be pretty significant. The Jade is now being referred to as Dragon Jade, and several characters seem to be using Dragon Jade technology. Is the Jade Sea going to be an enormous mine? How are the dragons related to the Jades? I cannot wait for these questions to be answered. So, the regions of Canva were very unique and memorable, but another reason why people have such fond memories of Canva was the creatures that lived there. ArenaNet didn't just take their creature designs from the first game and call it a day. Instead, they designed a wide variety of new creatures. Creatures that we haven't seen in Guild Wars 2 before. Let's take a look at some of these. The Kappa are turtle creatures that can mostly be found on Xingjie Island and the JC. Unlike the Siege Turtles, these turtles are not your friends. They are inspired by the kappas from ancient Japanese folklore, and every time I mention them on my stream, people like to spam a certain Twitch emote. The naga are snake-like creatures who are able to survive both on land and in the sea. There has been some speculation that they might be related to the Forgotten or the Craze, but no connection has ever been confirmed. 
Long ago, the Naga were a thriving civilization and they lived at peace with the humans. But when a Jade Wind happened and the Jade Sea was turned into Jade, the Naga were almost completely wiped out. The surviving Naga blamed the humans for the disaster, and thus the peace with the humans came to an end. We've already seen a screenshot and also some concept art of the Naga in End of Dragons. They look a lot more colorful than their Go to Swan variants. Next up are the Oni. The Oni are perhaps the scariest creatures in all of Canva. These demon-like creatures first started being sighted after the Jade Winds. They would appear out of thin air and try to butcher anyone with insights. The Oni were some of the toughest enemies in Gulter's factions, and it was always a little bit scary when they would appear out of nowhere. Some believe that the Oni are actually related to the Outcasts. The Outcasts were once humans that were mining the Jades. Deep below the surface, they encountered Kanaksai, a mysterious demon that corrupted them and drove them mad. It seems kind of likely that this demon also had something to do with the Oni. The petrified Echovald forest houses some rather unique creatures as well. The Wallows are large rat-like creatures that were domesticated by the Kursix. The Kursix even had their own cable car which was powered by a Wallow in a hamster wheel. The Echovald is also home to the mysterious Wardens. These are humanoid creatures that almost look a little bit plant-like. They followed Urgos, the tree-like spirits of Echovald. Urgos and the Wardens had long worked together with the Kursix to protect the forest, but when a Jade Wind happens, Urgos became corrupted. The Wardens blamed the Kursix for their forest becoming petrified and they became hostile to humans. Some people have long speculated that the Wardens might be somehow related to the Silvari. Perhaps they came from another pill tree in the same way that Malik was also from another tree. I'm really interested to see if a reading that links the Wardens and the Silvari together somehow. That could make for a really interesting story. And that brings us to the end of today's video. In my opinion, Canva is an incredibly rich fantasy setting, with memorable locales and interesting creatures. A lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for Canva and are excited to revisit it after 15 years. If you weren't one of those people, I hope I managed to explain to you why this nostalgia is so strong. I hope you understand now why Canva is so special. Thank you so much for watching. If you like nerding out about Guilders 1 and 2, definitely make sure to drop by my Twitch stream sometime over at twitch.tv slash I am live 5 to 6 days a week. You can also join my Discord server which has tons of people that are passionate about the game. Hope to see you there. See ya!